Now we're going to get started on some estimating training. I want you to understand that at the foreman level, estimating means gathering and organizing the material and labor in a manner that will help us profitably manage our project. I mention this because I want you to know that we're going to use estimating tools a little differently than a normal estimator might. The reason is that while we're looking for data that will help us to better manage our projects, an estimator is looking to compile the cost to build a project quickly so that they can get on to the next estimate. Estimating is a numbers game. The more estimates you toss out, the more projects you win. Since their win rate, the rate at which they win projects, might only be 1 in 5 or 1 in 10, the more estimates they get out, the more jobs they win. We, on the other hand, want to be more detailed in our approach in order to get the data formatted in a manner that will aid us in managing our project. I'm telling you this because even though the methods I teach you will permit you to bid and win projects, they will not be the most efficient way to spit out repetitive bids. Just like the tools you use to install electrical material, there are some specific tools that will aid you in estimating. Let's take a look at them. This is a digital plan scale. There are several good ones on the market. The reason I chose to show you this one is because you can buy it right off the shelf at Home Depot or Lowe's. This particular company has several models available. I believe this is their basic model and it's just fine for our needs. You'll notice that it has a wheel to roll over the plans and works much the same as a measuring wheel that you might use to measure long distances on job sites. Up here you'll find a tally counter. Every time you press this button it adds one unit to the counter so you can count things like light fixtures or receptacles. These buttons allow you to set the scale. It has preset scales for engineering like 10 feet per inch and up and architectural scales like 16th, 8th, and quarter inch per foot. You can also set custom scales which comes in handy if you know the distance between two given points but do not know the scale of the drawing. A lot of times when you do not know the scale you can measure what you know to be a three foot doorway, set the distance, and the scale will be set for the entire sheet. You can also use other buttons to measure square footage and volume. You can estimate with an architectural scale, but this is much faster. This is an architect scale. Typically the scales included on these rulers will be 3 seconds inch per foot, 1 8 inch per foot, 3 16 inch per foot, quarter inch per foot, 3 8 inch per foot, half inch per foot, three quarters of an inch per foot, one inch per foot, inch and a half per foot, and three inches per foot. As I mentioned previously, you can use this for estimating in a pinch, but a digital scale is much better. It is still a good idea to have one of these handy. I tend to use mine most often on job sites and leave the digital scale at home. This is an engineer scale. It's much the same as an architect scale, but the scales will be 10 feet per inch, 20 feet per inch, etc. They are most often used on site or civil drawings. Again, a great tool to have. I use mine most often on site. This is a tally counter. Although the digital scale does include a tally counter, I find it more convenient to use one of these. That's probably because I'm old school and used one of these before digital scales were commonly available. If you get used to using the counter on your digital scale, you won't need one of these. But I did want you to know that they're available in case you didn't like the counter on the digital scale. Highlighters. 
These are great for highlighting notes on drawings that you don't want to miss during the takeoff. I generally use a yellow highlighter to highlight critical installation methods in the plans or specifications. For instance, sometimes the specifications require a minimum of three quarter inch conduit or that you increase wire size on 20 amp circuits to number 10 copper over 60 feet in length. I also use it to highlight special notes on individual drawings that I want to be sure I address in the takeoff. I use an orange highlighter to highlight the specific types of permitted material like EMT, MC cable, or GRC, just so I can remember the flavor of the takeoff for quick reference. I personally use a red colored pencil to mark off every portion of the estimate as I complete it. This keeps me from entering the same material twice or from missing a certain portion of the project by mistakenly believing that it's already complete. I also use it to mark off each sheet number when the sheet is complete. This way I know which sheets I've completed and which ones I haven't. This is a portion of the drawings I gave you in the last lesson. We're going to begin our study right here. You're welcome to follow along with those drawings and the takeoff that goes with them. Depending on the size of your project, it may include a specifications book or it might simply list the specifications on one sheet of the drawings. Either way, you need to read the specifications prior to completing your takeoff so that you know what type of materials and applications you can use. If there is a spec book, you'll find the electrical specifications in Division 16 or Section 16,000. For our purposes here, we're going to assume that our project does not include the use of MC cable concealed in walls, meaning we can use it above T-bar ceilings, but we'll have to use EMT in the walls. We're going to assume that we're dealing with a three-phase system and that the specifications permit us to group circuits with one neutral for receptacle loads, but require separate neutrals for all lighting loads. With that in mind, we're going to group circuits B9, 11, and 13. We're going to start off by running a home run from panel B to the first receptacle for circuit 11. From there, we will run a conduit to feed circuit 9 and 13. Then, we will run the conduits out to each receptacle. In order to be competitive, you have to take every advantage to reduce material and labor costs. Combining multiple circuits into a single home run is one method of doing that. That's called value engineering. By combining those three runs into one conduit, we eliminate about 50% of the material and labor to run those three home runs. As an example, if the estimator ran a home run to each circuit as shown on the drawings, We've just cut our labor and material costs, but kept the labor and material costs that the estimator included in the bid price. If we're able to find enough opportunities like this to cut costs and keep the excess money in our budget, it gives us breathing room and makes our ability to provide a profitable project that much easier. This is where your understanding of the code and the specifications can really help you build profit into your project. If your project is a remodel and you're able to view it before you complete your takeoff, you might be able to locate home runs that already exist that you can reuse and other advantages. Always ask if you can view the site prior to doing your takeoff on remodel projects. Okay, let's take a look at some different estimating software options. There are several good estimating softwares available. AccuBid by Trimble seems to be the most popular. McCormick is another popular option. 
Conest is another. And Electrical Bid Manager by Vision Infosoft is another top contender. The first thing you should do is check with your company to see if they have a license to an electrical estimating software that you can use for free. Most of these systems have free training videos that you can use to learn the software. I bought my own software back in 1994. I chose Electrical Bid Manager by Vision Infosoft and have never regretted it. The thing I like about it is that it's easy to learn and use, and the reporting is excellent and simple to compile. I've used it to compile estimates for projects well into the millions of dollars with no problem at all. If you decide to buy your own software, I can definitely recommend them without hesitation. Their entry-level program is all you need, and you can negotiate a payment plan to purchase their software. Another option that you can use on the cheap is Red Rhino by Hard Hat Industry Solutions. I've never used this software, but did explore it for this video, and it looks like a good solution that will work for our purposes. It's web-hosted, so you can just log in to use it. They do offer a free 30-day trial, which will give you time to compile your first project, and they offer free training. I believe you can also pay for a month worth of use to compile your next project and then unsubscribe. If you do decide to purchase your own software, whatever product you choose, do me a favor and ask them if they offer an estimate guard discount. Chances are that they'll ask you, what the hell is that? But I want them to start hearing my name because I want to negotiate discounted pricing for my students in the near future. Okay, this is Electrical Bid Manager by Vision Infosoft. To start our project, we're going to select New and set up our new project. You can fill in all of the fields if you want, but the only critical field is the project name. Click OK and the project will open. You can see in the title bar that your project is open. We'll select Wire Conduit Takeoff to begin our estimate. We'll select Branch Circuits, Conduit Size, Difficulty, Conduit Type, Wire Type, size, and count. Typically, as an estimator, you would set this as three wires, take off all the half-inch EMT on the project that contains three wires, then set it at four wires, take off all the conduits that contain four wires, then do the same for five wires, which will include a ground. This will give you a more accurate wire count. This particular run from panel to last outlet would start with five wires, then taper down to three wires. So I'm just going to include four wires for the entire circuit. I can take this liberty because I'm going to compare my final material list to the actual estimate and then adjust my counts to match the company estimate. I do this because whether I'm right on material or the company is, the company estimate is the estimate I need to build to. This will enable me to show them where they're fat and where they're lean so that they can adjust for future estimates. I also want to know if they're lean anywhere because if they are lean on material, they are also lean on labor as well. And we're going to talk about that at the end of the project if it causes me to go over on hours. Set your supports and fittings preferences here. These are our breakdown categories. We're going to use these to break our takeoff into tasks that we will assign to our workers. If you use all of these breakdowns to define your tasks, you'll have five levels of breakdown. I say five levels because in addition to these four breakdowns, the program will also automatically break out your task by phase of construction. For this project, we're only going to use the section breakdown and then break that out by phase of construction. 
Here's what Vision says about breakdowns. All job takeoffs may be broken out to five levels of detail. This makes it easy to isolate various portions of the job to create job alternatives and to view reports for these segments of the job only. The four primary job breakouts are as follows. Phase, section, breakdown, and division. Additionally, each takeoff may be assigned a drawing reference that may later be used to create reports for certain pages of your job blueprints. To change the names of the job breakouts, choose Job Settings from the menu bar. Highlight an entry and select Edit to change the names. Click on the Add button to create additional entries. Here's an example of how job breakouts can be used. Phase might be Raceway, Fittings, Boxes. Section 1 might be First Floor. Breakdown might be Room 102. Division might be Restroom in Room 102. Section 2 might be Second Floor. Breakdown 2 might be Room 202. Division might be restroom in room 202. Only job breakouts with actual takeoff entries will show up for selection on job extension and material list extension screens. We'll discuss phases next. You can see by their description that breakdowns can be used to really narrow down the detail of your estimate. We will be using breakdowns to get much more detail in our estimates than Vision mentions here. Select Section 1. Highlight the first task and select Edit. Relabel the section and click OK. Now I'm going to roll off my conduit length off camera. I'll start at the electrical panel and measure all the way to the furthest outlets. After measuring the conduit length, I entered the following data. Overall conduit length, 490 feet. Number of runs, 12. The number of runs is how many separate conduit runs there are in the entire conduit system measured. This would be how many times the conduit is broken by boxes. In other words, from box to box. This tells the estimating system how many EMT connectors to include. In this case, 12 runs would equal 24 connectors. Next, we'll click on Other Items. This will allow us to add any other material we need to this section of the takeoff. In this case, we will add the outlet boxes, devices, trims, and any mounting hardware we might need. From here, we'll select Select Items. This will enable us to add virtually any piece of material we want to this section of the takeoff. We could select a box and a plaster ring and a receptacle and a ground pigtail and a device plate separately, or we could select an assembly that would include all of these items. I'm going to select an assembly. I selected assemblies and now I'll select receptacles, flush, wood metal stud, duplex, and 20 amp duplex spec grade stainless steel plate. Now I'll enter my quantity, in this case 12, and select OK. You can see that the assembly has been entered. And lastly, we're going to select takeoff. You can see in this area right here that the material has been entered into the system. This is called the audit trail. I can double click on this area and it will open up so we can take a look. And this is the entire material list for circuits B, 9, 11, and 13. Next, we'll click on reports. From there, we'll click on job extension. Before we compile our report, there are some parameters we'll want to adjust. The first being Labor Column. We'll select Labor Column 2. Just so you know that it's an option, we'll adjust Labor Column 2 up 20%.
This is how we fine tune our labor units to match our own true rate of installation. Next, we're going to change the sort order of our report. I want my report listed by section, and then I want each section broken down by phase of construction. So I chose section first and phase second. Next, we'll select extension report to generate the report. Note that the button to the left of extension report is extension spreadsheet. Extension spreadsheet will generate the exact same report, but in an Excel format. More on that later. And here's our report broken down by section and by phase of construction. I've already advised you that in order to manage your project effectively, you may need to compile your own estimate. It's been my experience that companies grossly and needlessly drop the ball in relation to giving their field managers the information that they need to manage projects effectively. I personally have done my own takeoff of every project I've managed in the last 25 years. Today, even if I did get an acceptable breakdown from the company I'm working for, I think I would do my own takeoff anyway, because I want to value engineer the project and include the material that I prefer. This introduction to estimating was just a glimpse into the process. I hope that I've piqued your interest enough that you'll advance your study of estimating further. There is already a lot of really good training out there on estimating practices if you want to pursue it, and I encourage you to do that. Although I feel capable of teaching an estimating class, and may choose to do that in the future, to do it right now would prevent me from getting you as quickly as possible to that higher wage. So I'm going to encourage you to pursue those skills on your own for the time being. These are just a few of the estimate training books I found available online. And this is exactly how I began my own skills on estimating. I encourage you to buy one or two and begin your own study of estimating. I would also encourage you to get friendly with an estimator in your own company who can familiarize you with estimating software that your company uses and possibly even hook you up with a copy of that software. This is a training manual by Mike Holt that I bought and read just so I could make a recommendation. It is a good book and will get you the information you need. From here, we'll move on to scheduling, which will highlight the need for a well-formatted estimate.